monetizing digital services since 2004, boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG, where innovation meets monetization. Welcome to the HCI family of podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Welcome to the podcast. In this episode, I talk with Lynette Heath about INVENT's Environmental, Social, and Governance Report. Lynette Heath, welcome to the conversation today. Thank you, John. Glad to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from the Minneapolis area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about INVENT's report, Environmental, Social, and Governance report out uh, this year uh, to talk about these really important issues. And it's something I really enjoy talking about. I'm I'm kind of a big believer in the social impact space. I talk a lot about these types of topics. Uh, you know, generally speaking, but also as they connect to organizations and people within the organizations as a mechanism to help reinvigorate people, align people with meaning and purpose and, and some of those sorts of things, not to mention all the other positive outcomes that come as we focus on these sorts of uh, important issues. As we get started, I wanted to share Lynette's bio with everybody. Lynette Heath is Invents Executive Vice President and Chief Human Resource Officer and ESG People Pillar Executive Sponsor. Prior to joining Invent, she was the Senior Vice President of Global Human Resources at Twin Cities-based Entrust data card. Uh, again, a real pleasure to have you, Lynette. Anything else you would like to highlight by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? I would just say I've also, I've had the pleasure, as many of us in HR are able to do, to work in a variety of industries. I was with General Electric for a number of years before going to Entrust Data Card, which is Entrust today, working in financial. I was in healthcare before that with McKesson HBOC, and now really thrilled to be at Envent, which is in the electrical industrial space. And one of, I think the great things, as I mentioned earlier about HR is that we're able to experience so much. And over my career, I've been able to bring all the learnings with me to where I am today. And that's just been a benefit, which I'm really appreciative of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And HR is a really fun dynamic space to be in. Uh, I know people you know, conjure up all these mental pictures of Toby in the office and like some of these lesser desirable kind of caricatures and stereotypes. Um, but it, it's it's a wonderful place to be. And, you know, the, the ESG component to all of this is mm -hmm. one of the, you know, the things that has evolved over the last couple of decades into something that I think is a really, really important part of any business. And it's something that people get really excited about. I also think about you know, I think everyone can get excited about it, but I think particularly millennial and Gen Z workers yes. really are demanding this within organizations. Like they only want to work for organizations that are taking this stuff seriously. And it is a, a real motivator and a driver for them in their careers. And so, you know, from a social standpoint, from a, a citizen, you know, global citizen standpoint, these are things we need to pay attention to. But from a simple bottom line, like I want to attract and retain good people kind of mm -hmm. perspective. Yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. And the business case is really strong for all of this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Agree 100% with what you said. All right. Well, let's go ahead and dive on in. Um, can you frame up for us a little bit the background behind the env environmental, social and governance report at Invent? Um, mm -hmm. when and why you started getting involved in this space, uh, and then we can start to unpack this report. Sure. And I, I think I'll back up a little bit. Um, sure. You may or may not be aware about Invent and just who we are and how we form. We're a fairly young company. We spun out of Pent Air just over five years ago now. 
And so thinking about that time when we were forming, it was really exciting. And that's that's what drew me here is being able to launch a new company, but be set on a really solid foundation. Mm-hmm. And we were able to then take a step back and say, okay, we have wonderful foundational attributes, but who do we want to be? Mm-hmm. We're, we're coming out our own brand new name. Who do we really want to be as an organization? And we had some thoughtful discussions around that. And over the first couple of years, it's really just stand us up and make sure we can function and operate. But then having the opportunity to say what's next, what's out there, and knowing that ESG is really important to your point, we, we hear from all of our constituents and key stakeholders that it matters. So what are we doing? And we started with that first report just as a baseline and have put a really strong strategy behind it. I'm really thrilled to be able to be the people pillar owner and talk about what that means for the organization. But you can look at the building blocks that we put in place since we spun. We have a a chief inclusion and diversity officer. We didn't have that role when we spun. We didn't have any, which we call IND inclusion and diversity in the organization when we spun. We weren't gathering on a regular basis that feedback from our employees in terms of surveys, hearing what's on their mind, making sure we have a robust program around that Mm -hmm. two-way communication, and a variety of other ways that we're focusing on our people and making sure that our people know they matter. We say they matter, but they're feeling it every day. And after going out to our our different locations and unsolicited, our people would tell me, we feel the focus on people here at Invent. We Mm -hmm. feel that people matter. It's more than something that's just said. And, And for me, that's so important. And that helps fuel really the leadership and the drive around that S to your point in ESG, although all of it matters, of course, but that helps bring back for me to the organization and not just to the HR team, but our executive leadership team and our people leaders who we bring together twice a year in a people leader call and talk about here's what matters. How are we showing up? What shadow are we casting for our people? It's really important that they all feel it all around the world. And we've established that. So it's been exciting. Here we are. We just, I'm sorry, celebrated our five-year anniversary, May 1st, which is a thrill in hearing the feedback from our people and coming up on our, our third report. Yeah, that's really exciting. And like you said, you know, every organization has to start somewhere. So you start with the baseline and then you can start to get to the point where, yeah, you can do this every single year. So anyone who's listening, who's like, oh, that's great. I would love it if our organization did this, but like, we're so behind. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, yeah, everyone starts where they're at and, and uh, don't let that be a reason to not begin. Exactly. And you mature every year in terms of what you're reporting, how you're reporting, the different stories. And as you mature on what you're reporting externally, well, of course, with that comes the internal development. Do we have the infrastructure in place to capture the data we want to report on? Are we making sure all of our people leaders and our people that they're focused? Because it matters. And that comes with maturing. But it certainly, I can tell you, by having that external report drives an internal focus as well. And, and so there's really a dual benefit of not just educating the world on some of the great things that we're doing, but also making sure there is that focus internally because our people read it, they care about it, and they get excited. And they say, wow, we could even do this next year mm-hmm. or this the mm-hmm. next year. So it drives that internal excitement as well as accountability, of course. Yeah. And, and something you mentioned a minute ago made me think about, you know, Another reason why some people are hesitant to get into the space or hesitant to start tackling it, it's it's this this concern around performative, you know, ESG work or social impact work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and I'm really happy that people are concerned about that. I, I I want organizations to do real stuff and not just you know the PR machine, not just performative measures, right? And right. and I've talked to lots of people that they're like, yeah, but we're just not there yet. And so anything that mm-hmm. we're going to do is just going to be performative. And maybe can you start just by talking to us about that as you're as you're a new company, you're 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 spinning yourself up, you're starting your your first baseline report. Um, you're maturing, you're building the plane as you're flying, and you are maturing. But yeah, yeah. that first year you're simply not going to be able to do as much as you're going to be able to do in year three. And there's always this kind of, you know, this imposter syndrome, I suppose we talk about that on a personal level, but as an organization, we can have it too. So how, how do you deal with that, that concern around, are we just 
doing performative stuff or are we really doing this? It's, I, I would say it's making sure that you're having those conversations internally where you're all coming to the conversation and, and to your point, you're being real with what can we do? There's mm-hmm. only so much you can do in a given year, right? Yeah. And what is, when we're transparent, we're authentic, it's we're doing some great things, but we are on this journey. And you talk about maturing. Year one with our first report, we didn't come out with these big lofty goals. We said, hmm, okay, we're going to start small. And we're going to talk about what we know we can perform over time. So not every pillar had a goal in there. And we continue to add and refine. And you may find, as we did, as if you look at our, our three reports now, we put a goal out there and said, wow, we ended up blowing it away the second year. Little did we know. So we're going to reset. That's wonderful. On the people side, fairly early on, we were able to say, we know we have goals in terms of representation where we want to grow. And we know mm-hmm. we're going to have a safety goal. So let's put that out there. And then what were some of those internal mechanisms to help drive that? And to your point, we were brand new. We started small with what we call our people leader goal. When we came out as as an organization, we developed, because it was so important, as I said, our people really do matter. Every single people leader every year as we cascade our goals has what we call a people leader goal. And in that goal, we talked about maybe what sounds pretty basic or fundamental. You're going to make sure you have your reviews on time. You're going Mm -hmm. to make sure that you set goals for people in a timely manner. And a number of other um, operational goals, let's say, from a people perspective. But part of the reason we did that is because, again, as I went out and talked to people, maybe there were some people who said, oh, I really haven't had goals per se set for a number of years. I haven't had a meaningful review let alone mid-year review in a number of years. We said, that's not okay. So we're going to set this up. And what we told our people is if our people leaders, if you do not successfully complete this goal, one, we have a five-point rating scale and that middle is really achieving expectations. You can't possibly be above that if you're not doing these things from a people leader. So while the goal is weighted at 10%, you could get exceeding on those other 90% of your goals, but your overall rating won't be. And that overall rating is going to impact my bonus. It's going to mm-hmm. impact my merit increase. And then we also said, so you have to do all of those correctly. And in terms of my bonus, it impacts that personal component of my bonus. And I will tell you, you're one. Maybe there was a thought, well, I know we said that, but I had a list of managers who hadn't completed one portion of it on time. And maybe a few of them came back and said, but you're not really going to ding my rating, right? Or their manager said, (laughs) but they blew it out of the water here, here, and here. And I said, that's wonderful. But no, because leading our people is so important. Yes, we're going to impact that. We're going to impact that. Here we are on year five. I can tell you, I have less than this now of -hmm. managers, but I had people come back and say, it wasn't my fault. I couldn't do their mid-year review. They went out on vacation. I said, really? For six weeks? For, because we give you a pretty big window. You're telling me for six weeks? Well, no, I said, then that's on you. And yeah. and just coming back and they every time they'd come back and they got, okay, this is the real deal. And then it just wasn't check the box, have the conversation. Are you having a meaningful conversation? And that's where, hey, HR professionals, the onus is on us to make sure we give the tools. So we build their capability that are you thinking about how you develop them? We then created and added throughout these five years, the individual development plan or IDPs that were thoughtful about it, that it leads to our leadership competencies. And this year, so when we talk, we keep evolving, that was on the front end of the review conversation. So we use Workday, a great platform, but we automated. We want to make sure the very first thing you're doing is talking about that development. We found that if it's at the tail end, maybe it wasn't happening. And it's really important that our people understand, how are you going to develop me? How can I grow my career? And and so we, I would just say, continue to evolve to make it better based on what we're hearing from our people. Great. You're talking about how you're going to develop me. You're making sure my leaders understand that they have tools at their disposal and they're coming in and having the right conversation with me throughout the course of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, I will also tell you, we've heard, oh, maybe, you know, maybe performance reviews are going away or do we, should we stop doing them or evolve them? We continue to go back to our people. We'll conduct focus groups. We talk to our employees and we'll say, 
what is your experience? What would improve that experience? I do a number of roundtables myself. I'm interested in the employee experience. How can we improve? What can we do better? And I, I'll often tell them, if I'm changing everything, what is the one or two things you're going to say, but Lynette, not this. And that's mm-hmm. how we create our programs that we have in place. And we maybe evolve or update our approach. It's not about necessarily, here's what's going on externally. Here's a shiny new object, if you will, or a new approach. It's let's go back to our people. Let's go back to our leaders and let's find out what matters to them and what's going to have the most impact. And that's how we really have continued to either create new program, new programs or evolve the programs that exist today. Well, yeah, there's so, so there's so much there that I really like just the pragmatic approach towards building out the mechanisms, the structures, the scaffolding to help you be successful. Right. And mm-hmm. when it comes back to this performative question that I asked, um, that's that's how you do it. That's how you make sure it's not just performative. You, it, you actually do the hard work of making sure that this is embedded throughout the organization, that you hold people accountable. All those managers who for years, you know, perhaps they never really were held accountable to do these yeah. basic people leader functions. And, and now they are and for real. And when push comes to shove and you're like, oh, but really, are we going to ding them on their bonus? Yeah, for real. Yeah. We are. We are. Um, we are. <laughs> and, and it takes sometimes a couple times, uh, a couple cycles to really get people on board, yes. uh, to help get, generate that buy-in to really get people to see the vision of it. And frankly, for some people to self-select out and you get new, sometimes new people, um, right. all of that, it, it usually takes a little bit of time, but people know if you're putting the real effort behind behind what you're saying is important and they know when you're not. And so if, if you're worried about being performative, first, I would say, again, start where you're at. And sometimes all we can have are aspirational goals at the very beginning, but, you know, move quickly from just the mere aspirational goals towards like, how are we going to build out these mechanisms, the scaffolding? How are we going to hold uh, to build out the accountability mechanisms uh, and then stick to it, like actually do it. And people, you know, some people will kind of be upset because now they're being held accountable, but other people, most people will say, okay, now I have some clarity. Now I actually know we're putting our money where our mouth is. We're actually walking the walk and we're going to hold people accountable. You know, people generally will appreciate that. Absolutely. I would agree. Um, certainly a hundred percent on that. And it is, it's the baby steps because you want to make sure that the organization can absorb it and it truly can become embedded. It is not a flavor of the month, right? It's not mm-hmm. a check the box. It's it, it's not performative. It is, this is really about who we are and how we operate. Mm-hmm. And our people are so important to us and matter. We make sure that that translates through everything we do and how we approach. And it doesn't mean we're perfect. And we certainly continue to have areas that we can improve, but we always yeah. come back to it through the lens. I would say with not just the HR function, but how we develop our leaders, it's about that employee experience and how are mm-hmm. we showing up for them? Yeah. Well, that's another point that you just made that I think is important to double click on for a moment. And that is, you know, we're not perfect. Nobody expects us to be perfect. No. What people do hope for and what they frankly expect is they expect accountability. They want you to own it. If you're, if you're trying to do something and it doesn't quite work out, okay, pivot, learn, Mm -hmm. you know, adjust, uh, tweak what you're doing, but they do want accountability. And what they really don't want is for you to gaslight them and pretend like everything's okay. We're not stupid. Like people know when things are actually not happening the way that you say they're supposed to happen. And when you're giving people a pass, uh, particularly what really bothers, you know, especially kind of entry level, mid management level kind of people in organizations is when there's like one set of rules for them. And there's another set of rules for the C-suite and every, it's not hard to, to know that. And everyone it, it talk about demotivating people towards, you know, these accountability um, mechanisms uh, th- that will play a huge part. And so, you know, as you mentioned, you know, let's just make sure that it's very clear um, that everyone is going to be actually held accountable. Uh, we're, we're going to hold ourselves as leadership to the same standard we're holding everyone else. People will really appreciate that. They'll know when that's not happening. Uh, and so just be transparent, be honest, don't gaslight. Uh, yeah. And they'll go a long, a long way in developing the trust that's necessary to help all this move forward. Absolutely. And one of the things that, I, as I mentioned earlier, we have this wonderful foundation that we've been able to build upon. And one of that was we brought our company values over and we call them our win right values. 
And that just tells you a little bit about the organization. We're about winning, but doing it in the right way. And you speak of accountability. We have accountability for performance in our values. And we talk a lot about that. And even we have culture sessions. So when people join the organization, they are able to attend a culture orientation. They understand what our culture is all about. And it is in our culture to talk about accountability. Are you using victim terminology? Like, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not my fault. It's this, it's that. Here's the why I couldn't do X, Y, or Z. Or are you taking accountability for, for what you do, how you show up, whether it's how you're treating one another, whether you're hitting a goal or not hitting a goal. Let, let's talk about it. Let's be accountable. Certainly things come up over time or that we don't necessarily plan for, but let's be accountable and talk it through and make sure that we can move forward. And that's part of, just part of the culture that I love. Also, uh, you know, all, all of our values, our win right values really, really are a part of who we are and how we show up every day. And that talking about our, our culture and just how we formed the big S of the ESG, we added into our performance um, rating process, if you will, it's not just the what, meaning our goals and how do you achieve them, but it's the how. So we do rate on the values as well. How are you demonstrating the values? And that can impact your overall rating, which again, impacts your compensation. And we make sure people really understand it's so important of how you're showing up every single day and how are you living the values, which hopefully you're doing versus not living the values. Again, I understand we all can have an off day, but it really Mm -hmm. matters. Are are you really approaching things from a a positive perspective because positive energy matters? Are you treating people with respect and teamwork? These things matter. They're more than just words on a wallet and vent. And that's what I tend to hear over and over. And I do think that's a differentiator for us as our culture is. Wonderful. And I really like all this conversation around just the approach towards this report. Um, let's take the rest of our time together to highlight some of the, the the impacts, the findings, the outcomes that have come from this report. Uh, what If you were to focus in on, say, two to three things that you think are the most important um, findings in this report that you would like to share with everyone, what would those be? Well, I so selfishly, I'm going to focus on the people pillar, right? Because I think there's a lot of great things um, in in the entire report, and some of it's on planet, which um, certainly I won't go into our product, our other two pillars. But for me, it's I'm going to say, of course, it's all about that people pillar. One thing, as I mentioned, we established goals pretty early on, and what was really important to us were some representation goals. So we mm-hmm. focused on gender and professional roles, as well as in the U.S., that racial diversity in management roles. And we have found, we put the focus in place. We then translated that focus internally. We have um, in our management incentive plan, we have what we call an ESG scorecard, and that's a 15% of the calculation, where in there we focus on ESG initiatives and we talk about diverse slates. And we hadn't necessarily talked about that before becoming our own company and how important it is. Obviously you can't hire diverse individuals, if you don't have a diverse slate, that's that's really key. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. now we're showing metrics and we're talking about it. And at our recent global leadership this meeting this year in January, I had a people breakout session. So we have smaller groups and we're talking about it. And this is where it's so exciting for me to see peers of different management level um, individuals asking one another, how are you achieving this? I think we all know how challenging it is, how competitive it is in the talent labor market today, right? How are you finding it's taking us so long to get that slate of individuals, of candidates, and then maybe it takes a little longer to get that diverse slate. What are you doing? And they're sharing best practices. They're sharing information. We've had a focus on it and we increased it. We said, no, we're going to increase the focus on this because what we have found when we bring diverse candidates to the slate, oftentimes, guess what? They're the best hire. We're Mm -hmm. all about making us better. And there's a lot of internal dialogue around that. But the outcome is we've improved our representation in both categories. And if you look at our financial results, we have fantastic financial results. Our investors love our focus on this because it translates through as research shows it will. Bringing the diversity of experiences, background, diversity of thought is simply making us a better organization. And so I would say that's been very successful. Also, our focus on safety is something else that we called out, and that really matters. And our safety approach, it's making us better internally, 
and making sure that we're being really thoughtful. We we strongly believe that every single person around the world and every plant and every office has the right to leave work in the same shape that they showed up. It matters to us. And those are conversations and focuses, uh, focus areas and discussions that we're having every day. And I think that by calling those out in the survey, it just makes you focus more internally as well as externally on those points. And we're seeing great performance there um, in terms of safety of our people. And I would say we're best in class, but we always strive to be even better. And that's what we're seeing in terms of outcomes. I love it. Lynette, this has just been a really fun conversation. I know at the time I'm going to have to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about uh, you and your team there at Invent, your ESG report, uh, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Okay. Thank you so much, John. It's been a real pleasure. Um, I I would say feel free to uh, look me up on LinkedIn at Lynette Heath. I'm with Invent. You can certainly go to our company website as well. I encourage you to do that. You'll find our most recent as well as previous ESG reports. We're really proud of everything we're doing, of the progress we're making. I will tell you, I'm really, really proud to work at Invent, to be part of this team. I'm incredibly proud and thankful and grateful, quite frankly, for my HR team. I think they're fantastic. And we continue to grow, to be innovative in our approach, to think differently. What are we doing today? You know, at SPIN five years ago, we had no ERGs, employee resource groups. Today we have nine. We have over a thousand members around the world. You think about how that changes your culture. And we had some people who say, what? I don't even know what an ERG is. What does that Mm -hmm. mean? What are we doing? How we've globally launched an employee relief fund because that matters. We have an invent foundation. We're talking globally about our EAP. And previously, we only had that in the US, an employee assistance program. We continue to try to show up in ways that our employees know you matter, we care, we're here for you. And that's an organization I'm proud to be a part of. I can tell you, I just had some key interviews last week and the candidate said, we see a lot about performance with the heart. And that is true. And that's who we are. We're all about results, but with caring. And and so that's just, a, I think, a culture we're going to continue to foster, to continue to cultivate, and that will continue to be a differentiator for us at Invent. So I encourage people, please feel free to reach out to me directly, but go check out our website or connect with me on LinkedIn. Wonderful. Lynette, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Lynette and our team at Invent can do for you. Check out the ESG report. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Monetizing digital services since 2004. Boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG. Where innovation meets monetization.